survivors and welcome to Survivor's Guild, part of the Mutant Fam Horror Consortium, a community of like-minded individuals creating content and building relationships by and for fans of the drive-in. Today, we're taking a look at 2020's killer fish billy flick, The Barge People. But first, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now I hope you like lame vacations that suddenly turn interesting when it suddenly turns deadly, because this movie is getting spoiled. The Barge People, written by Christopher Lombard and directed by Charlie Steeds, starring Kate Marie Davies, Natalie Martins, McKenna Geiler, Mark McCurdy, Matt Swallis, and Kane Surrey, The Barge People is about a quartet made of two couples who board a barge for a relaxing weekend retreat but run into trouble when they run into some of the locals and local wildlife? We open up to some slideshow exposition letting us know that in the past 10 years over 150 people have been reported missing on the Kennet and Avon Canal. I wonder how that stacks up against other canals. I mean, that doesn't sound all that bad. Uh-oh, now I'm scared. We then flash way forward to Cat, who is in some sort of cavern hiding from this fish billy, who appears to be dragging something or someone behind him. She finds some sort of shrine hallway made up of candlelit pictures of what we can only assume are the fish billy's victims, before getting knocked into last week and the opening credits. We then catch up with this here jogger, who catches up with this here bait, and then catches up with this here tire iron. <laughs> landing this here jogger at deposit number one into our meat bank. We then meet Kat and her boyfriend Mark, who are ready for their weekend getaway, before Sophie, Kat's sister, and her boyfriend Ben show up to join them. You learn everything you need to know about Ben within his first three seconds on screen. We see this skull in the ground, and I'm definitely counting it. That skull lands at deposit number two into our meat bank. Hey, what can I say? I'm desperate. We cut back over to our quartet, who are making themselves at home on the barge that they are taking for the weekend, and Mark is getting a quick lesson from this old guy. Yeah, you saw my parents when I was younger. Excellent. Well, you know it's counterintuitive. Who says bon voyage. Bon voyage. But doesn't sound like he actually means it. And as they begin their journey, Ben lets us know that we're in a horror movie. I can't get a bloody phone signal in here. And makes excuses for how annoying he is. Imagine that, a character written with no redeeming qualities. Hmm. We get a quick glimpse of Harry Potter who is making some sort of potion while someone or something hides in the foliage watching him and practicing their heavy breathing. We then get another reason to hate Ben. You've been there for ages. I need a pet. Five more minutes causing Mark to go out and water the plants instead. And while they are pulled off to the side, Kat and Sophie fill us in on their lives. Sophie and Ben have only been together for a few months, but are planning on getting married. And Kat and Mark have no plans on getting married, even though that they've been together for quite a while. They've both been hurt in the past and are taking things slow. We also find out that their mom passed away recently, and based on Kat's response, she probably wouldn't have liked Ben. Do you think mom would have liked Ben? Yeah, sure. But who would? We cut over to Mark and Ben, who are fishing? When Harry Potter comes over to let them know that they won't be catching anything living in this canal. You won't catch much in these waters. Not living anyways. Because of the unusually heavy amounts of bacteria in the water. And then tells us that the real enemy is climate change. It's a form of bacteria common in rivers and canals. But it's worsened over the years due to climate change and then tells them not to drink or swim in the water and they'll probably be fine. Mark then catches potential evidence of a crime before Ben kicks it out of his hand and back into the canal. A little bit later, back on the barge, Kat convinces Ben to steer the barge for a little while so that Mark can get some rest, and Ben acts like a douche. Okay, you can't be that bleeding difficult if he can do it. What was that supposed to mean? While Harry Potter acts like a victim. <laughs> Ben, who was busy on his phone, gets them too close to a docked barge, and when Mark tries to avoid a collision, he inadvertently causes one, and causes Ben to drop his phone into the canal. The people who own the barge are pretty pissed off, but Mark is okay with hit and runs, so he doesn't stop. We catch back up with Harry Potter, who comes face to face with climate change, and ends up in our meat bank at deposit number three. <laughs> cut back over to our quartet, who have tied off for the night, and then they head over to the local pub. They run into an old guy that briefly appeared earlier in the movie walking his dog, who is now looking for that dog and warning people he runs into. It's already too late for you. 
and a little bit later, while this old guy looks for his dog, he finds an axe connected to this here fish billy. <laughs> but he doesn't get added to our meat bank quite yet. Meanwhile, our double daters arrive at the pub, only to find out that they're all out of fresh meat. We've no hot food left for today. You've gotta to be kidding me. We're out of fresh meat. So they have to settle for some bags of chips and some booze. Unfortunately for them, Ricky and Jade, the people whose barge they bashed into, show up and take notice of them. That's them. Hey. The dickheads here at our barge. <laughs> there ain't gonna be no trouble in era tonight. And when things escalate, the pub owner takes matters into her own hands and kicks the two of them out of the pub. Kick. Nobody is killing anybody. Not in my pub. Now get out of my pub! And then as a peace offering, gives them a local special drink for their journey. Local speciality. Compliments of the house. I'm not drinking that. Oh, come on, just have one. The group gets back to their barge, drunk as skunks, and Ben heads to bed for the night. But when someone slams on the barge, Mark heads out to see what happened, uttering these famous last words. I'll be right back. The girls discover that they're not feeling so well, while Mark discovers a red X painted on the side of their barge, and then discover that Ricky and Jade have found them. And they brought along Jade's little brother, Max, for some good old fashioned backwoods assault. Mark, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> And while they harass our crew, Max gets fish baited by the fish billies. <gasps> and then stumbles down the stairs right into our meat bank at deposit number four. Max! <gasps> And when the electricity goes out, so do their lights when the group succumbs to the local specialty booze. When Kat comes to, she wakes up just in time to see Max getting devoured by one of our fish billies. And now everyone is tied up. Ricky wakes up tied up in the bathtub, while everyone else aside from Sophie is in the kitchen area. Mark slips out of his ropes and into something more comfortable while the fish billy is still preoccupied with its meal, and takes out a pocket knife to free Cat, who then leans over to free Ben, but maybe she should just leave him. Unfortunately, the fish billy takes notice and a scuffle ensues. <laughs> While Ricky is assaulted in the bathroom, Mark gets the upper knife and begins stabbing the fish billy repeatedly, spraying fish pus all over it. <laughs> all while Cat frees Jay. Sophie comes too, tied up in the sleeping quarters, and a fish man comes in to join her. When fish billy number one is all done getting stabbed by Mark, it decides to go on the offense, while Ben gets pulled into the bedroom. When Ben tries to barter with the barge person, it lets him know that it doesn't want money, it wants flesh. Your money is of no use to me. What do you want? Your flesh. <laughs> which is as good as money on the canal, but the exchange rate can be quite confusing. And when Jade finally stops mourning her brother, seriously, it feels like a role-playing game where only one character can move at a time. She picks up a pan and helps Mark fight off the creature from the Kennet and Navon Canal. Cut back to Ricky, who is all tired of being eight, and frees his hands enough to fight back, when Jade comes in to help him, only to get thrown through a wall and into the bedroom. Cat remembers that she has a sister as Jade brings Ricky out of the bathroom, and Mark sends Cat out, assuring her that he will get Sophie and Ben. Cat, go! I'll get them. Mark heads into the bedroom, but freezes up when he comes upon the fish billy feeding on Sophie, and stands there long enough for the mutant to get a couple whacks in on Sophie with its machete, sending her into our meat bank at deposit number five. Well, Mark, better luck next time. But when Mark doesn't have better luck next time, he lunges at the fish man with his knife, but totally misses, stabbing Ben instead, sending Ben straight into our meat bank at deposit number six. And when Mark really tries to sell it as a quote-unquote accident, the fish man pulls him out of it when he grabs him by the neck. And when the fish man, whose name is Blade, contemplates choking him to death, a disembodied voice tells him otherwise. No, Blade. We need him alive. 
Seriously, where the hell did that voice come from? We cut over to Three's company who are heading towards the tavern to call the police, but since they don't have cell service and Cat's phone just died, making Cat's phone deposit number 7 into our meat- Just kidding, that was dumb. I'm dumb. Anyway, Kat's dying phone just reminds us that Mark did us a solid by taking Ben out of the movie. Jade lets us know that they will not be heading back to the pub because the owner is just as nuts as the fish billies. Well, she did drug you guys with that booze, so I think I'm gonna side with Jade on this one. Kat and Jade argue about whose fault this whole mess is, and play a game of who lost which family member. My sister and her boyfriend might be dead for all I know. I lost my little brother tonight. A little later, as the group wander through the forest, scooping up field mice and bopping them on the head, the threesome discover that they are being hunted by the fish man when one jumps out and hacks off Ricky's arm, before giving him a big old kiss. <laughs> But Jade, being a jealous girlfriend, throws the fishman off her boyfriend and the two have a cat fight on the ground. Cat goes for the machete and discovers that the kiss that the fishman gave Ricky was the kiss of death, sucking Ricky's face all the way into the meat bank at deposit number 7. Cat grabs the machete and aims it at the fishman, but when Cat, who has never learned how to shoot a machete, gets the attention of the fishman, she must resort to using the machete the old fashioned way by swinging it, landing this mutant in the meat bank at deposit number 8. Now these fish billies have names, Razor, Blade, Hammerhead, and Nail. But the only one that we are given the name for is Blade, so we kind of have to guess as to the other three. I'm assuming, based on his shark-like attributes, that this one is Hammerhead, but I reserve the right to be wrong. I also debated about not counting these mutants, but I can't find a reason not to. Technically, they are the product of regular humans suffering the mutating effects of climate change. Had they been the product of bestiality or something, I might reconsider it, but best I can tell, they are just mutated humans. So they end up in the meat bank with all the other purer meat. Cat and Jade take off to an area with less dead things and continue their game of who has lost more people in their life. This was my mother's. The day I lost her, I never felt so alone. So don't you tell me I've got it easy. But their game is interrupted by the distant screams of Mark, who is being held in a cage somewhere, getting his finger cut off. Cat and Jade show up at the Fish Billy Fortress, and before Cat can storm in and die, Jade offers to sacrifice herself since her childhood sucked and her little brother was all she had to live for, and then lets Cat know that it was awful to meet her. I wish I could say it was nice to meet you. I wish I never f she runs in wielding her machete like a maniac, apparently hacking who I assume to be Razor into our meat pile at number 9. Before Blade interrupts her violent stabbing motion to throw down fisticuffs. While Cat sneaks around to find a way to free Mark, the battle rages beside her while she takes an axe to Mark's cage. That seems like overkill to me, but what else? And when she frees Mark, Jade bids them farewell and then gets deposited into our meat bank at deposit number 10. <laughs> Cat and Mark hide in a barn, and Mark, who can now only count to nine, breaks the news to Cat that her sister has already been deposited into the meat bank when he froze up and didn't stop the fish billy from killing her. But immediately he redeems himself by letting her know that he also killed Ben. I killed Ben. I killed Ben. Cat, I couldn't save your sister, but I killed Ben. You win some, you lose some. Mark encourages Cat to go on without him, since he can barely walk without his pointer finger, and she heads off into the wilderness to find help. She spots a car driving down the road and stops it. She jumps into the car just as one of the fish billies runs towards the vehicle, and she encourages the driver to get out of there. As they drive away, she learns that this dude, we'll call him Cannon McFodder, was hired to drive around at night, keeping an eye on the area where they dump the bad stuff that they don't want at the factory. And as he mocks environmentalists, the environment mocks back when they get a flat tire. Cannon McFodder gets out to change the tire and simply won't listen to the hysterical woman that he just picked up. And when Cat warns him that Blade has shown up, the man can't catch a hint, but he catches an axe just fine and gets axed into our meat bank at deposit number 11. <laughs> Blade breaks his way into the vehicle and Cat breaks her way out and takes off down the road. Cut back over to Mark who is hanging out in the barn when a mystery person joins him. We cat back up with Catch who is running through the wilderness again being hunted by Blade. She finally makes it back to Mark's barn only to find him missing and then she hides when she hears Blade approaching. She and Blade then have a quick scuffle and when she knocks him down she falls into a cavern under the barn. 
only to find that dog guy is not quite dead. And when he rubs it in her face that he told her to leave a long time ago, he then explains who those people are using every single trope except the title of the movie. What are they? Outcasts of society, bred into a family of deformed evil freaks, the product of incest, lawlessness, and cannibalism. Before Cat snuffs him out when he won't shut the hell up, reuniting this dude with his dog in our meat bank at deposit number 12. We then find ourselves at the beginning of the movie, which is actually towards the end, with Cat wandering around this makeshift shrine before getting knocked out. When she comes to, she's back at the tavern with the bartender lady who lets her know that Mark is fine and that she needs to rest. But when the lady offers her a bowl of soup, Cat is suspicious because earlier she said that they were all out of fresh meat. So the lady lets her know that they just got some in. I just got a new batch in. Your sister. Blade and another fish billy show up and the lady asks where the others are. She then vows to make Cat pay for killing part of her family. I'm gonna make you pay for what you and your friends did to my family! <laughs> She explains to Cap that she is still part of the food chain and then lets her boys know that they will be allowed to play with her before they eat Cap for breakfast. But Cap fights back and jumps over the bar grabbing a gun that was hidden behind it and shoots Blade and then misses the missus. And when Blade grabs her and starts choking her, she grabs the spoon from the bowl of soapy soup and jams it into Blade's ear and then jams his head onto the table depositing the spoon into his skull and Blade into the meat bank at deposit number 13. She runs out of the tavern but is blocked by that old dude who must be the patriarch of the family, with a knife to Mark's throat. Mark lets Cat know that he loves her before getting his throat slit and slitting right into our meat bank at deposit number 14. And then the patriarch of the Barge family, Robinson, goes on a diatribe about religion? You feel this need to put your faith into something, a higher power that you believe to exist. Your final thoughts will be to realize that it doesn't. Before picking Cat up and dragging her back into the tavern, and then locks her into a room, Cat quickly realizes that he stole the crucifix that she wore that was her last remaining keepsake of her mother. And we catch back up with the patriarch who is retrieving the borrowed barge, and the movie ends. So now, to find out, what are your chances of suffering survivor's guilt? This is where we take a look at our main characters and the death that surrounds them to determine what your chances are of surviving this movie. We start off our meat bank deposits with the jogger that falls for the trap at deposit number one. Then that skull that we see on the trail at deposit number two. Our environmental wizard, Harry Simon Potter at deposit number three. Max tumbling in at deposit number four. Sophie hacking in at deposit number five. Ben deserving to die at deposit number six. Ricky romantically landing at deposit number seven. Hammerhead, I assume, landing at number 8. Razor, I assume, landing at deposit number 9. Followed by Jade sacrificing herself into deposit number 10. We've got Cannon McFodder coming in at deposit number 11. Harbinger Dog Guy getting snuffed out at deposit number 12. Fishbilly Blade spooning in at deposit number 13. And we have Mark wrapping up our meat bank deposits at number 14. Now let's take a look at our survivors. Though things aren't looking great for her, we've got Cat. Then we've got the Matriarch and the Patriarch of the Barge People and the last remaining Fishbilly making four survivors total, which means that out of a total of 18 characters, only four survive, giving you a 22.2% chance of surviving this movie. Given those odds, how would these Fishbillies make sure that your family wins the game of who lost the most loved ones? Let me know in the comments below, and if this is your first time on my channel, go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Alright guys, as always, thanks, and don't die. Welcome back video, welcome back video, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back video creeps, what up guys, what up, welcome to my channel, video creep, make sure you hit subscribe.